Welcome to the second video of chapter 8. We will be continuing with exponential functions. In the first video, we determined if uh, a situation represented exponential growth or decay, and then we did some compound interest. In today's objectives, as you can see at the top, we're going to solve exponential equations, and we're going to model some more uh, modeling situations using exponential growth or decay. For today's video, you do need a calculator, not for the first part, but for the second part, you definitely do. So let's just jump right in. The golden rule, b to the x is equal to b to the y if and only if x equals y. What I want you to notice, which is very important, our bases are the same. So we don't just always set exponents equal, but if our two bases are the same, the exponents have to be the same as well. Looking at example number one, I have a base, I have a base, and I have powers. Bases are the same. That's only going to be true if our exponents are equal. So the two sides of the equation, if both sides have the same base, the only time that those will be equal is if the exponents are equal and the bases are equal. So dividing by 3, I get 4 thirds. Now, that should be fairly intuitive. If the bases are the same, set the exponents equal. Okay, it's going to get more, it's going to get tougher. For problems 2, 3, and 4, it says find the value of x in the following. It's actually three equations. So if we look at example number 2, don't just jump right in and say x equals 3. The golden rule doesn't apply here. We have 2 to some power and 8 to some power. The bases aren't the same. If the bases are not the same, we cannot set the exponents equal. Now, that doesn't mean we can't do this problem. It means we're going to need to do, do, do a little bit of manipulation. 2, I can't manipulate. 2 is just 2. 8, I can, though. Can I write 8 as a number to a power? Well, I can. 8 is 2 to the third. And then this exponent comes down as well. Okay, I'm still not ready to set things equal. Golden rule was a base to a power, a base to a power. We have that on the left side. The right side, though, has those two powers. So we need to deal with those. Okay, now, do we remember? A power to another power, what do I do with that? The multiply. So this is really 2 to the ninth. Okay, now the golden rule applies. The two sides of this equation are only going to be equal if the exponents are equal because the bases are the same. Bases are the same. I can set my exponents equal then. Okay, you have an example to try that next one. It says 9 to the power 2x minus 1 equals 3 to the 6x. Pause the video and come back when you are ready to go over this one. Okay, I will tell you that you should have gotten x equals negative 1. 9 you can rewrite as 3 squared. And then we have 3 to the 6x. The left side then, you should have gotten 3 to some power. The right side is 3 to some power. Because our bases are the same, our exponents are going to be also. So if you got that one right, good job. If you didn't, please take a look back and see if you can find your mistake. Okay, one more before we go on is this example number 4. So I have 1 ninth to the 2x equals 27 to the 4th. Okay, this one's trickier. I can actually rewrite both sides. Let's start with the 27. 27 is 3 to the 3rd. Now what about 1 ninth? 1 ninth is actually 3 to some power as well. 3 squared is 9, so 3 to the negative 2nd is 1 ninth. I can multiply those exponents on both sides. So I get 3 to the negative 4x is equal to 3 to the 12th. Because the bases are the same, I can set those exponents equal as well. Ooh, negative 4x equals 12, so x equals negative 3. Okay, so that's the first skill that we were learning from today's video. Second one is writing an exponential function. So write an exponential function for the graph that passes through the given points. General equation that we're going to use is a times b to the x. Okay, so we're going to write y equals a times b to the x. We need to find both a and b. Our answer is going to be a function that has x and y. 
but we do need to find the values of a and b. We're going to start with this first point. 0 is my x, 125 is my y, so I get 125 equals a times b to the 0. Well, anything to the 0 power is always 1, so this actually is 1. So I get 125 equals a times 1. My a is 125 then. Okay, so now I have y equals 125 times b to the x. Now is where I can use the second point now. The second point, same idea. I'm going to put 3 in for my x and 1,000 in for my y. So I get 1,000 equals 125 times b to the third. So I have 1,000 divided by 125 is equal to b to the third. Okay, this one's a little trickier. I have to get rid of that third power. Well, to undo a third power, I can do a third root. So a third root. Okay, so if I do this in the calculator, I should get the cube root of 1,000 is 10. The cube root of 125 is 5. So I get b to be 2. Now remember, your answer should be an equation. Your so this is not our answer yet. We need to write our final answer as an equation. y equals a times b to the x. Quick refresher, if you don't know where to find this third root button, it's under the math menu. So you'd hit the math menu, and then you should see the cube root. There's also a root that has an x in front of it, you can use that for any other kind of roots. Like if you needed to take a fifth root, you would plug in five, get that x root, and keep going. Okay, you're going to pause the video and try this next one on your own, please. So pause and come back when you are ready to keep talking. Let's see how we did. You should have started with y equals a times b to the x, plugging this point in first. we would get 144 is equal to a times b to the 0, and our a is 144. Then you should have used this other point to find b. Ultimately, your equation should have been y equals 144 times 3.5 to the x, which is the same as 144 times 7 over 2 to the x. Hopefully that's what you got. If you didn't, pause the video right now and try to find your mistake. Now remember, I am going to expect that you show work here. So if you turn in notes without work shown on this problem for both A and B, you will not get credit. So pause the video, try to find your mistake if you have one, and then let's keep going. We have uh, one more problem to do. It's going to take this skill of writing the function. And it's going to apply it to a, a real-life context or situation. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to take that skill of writing the exponential model, and we're going to apply it to a word problem. So Kristen starts an experiment with 7,500 bacteria cells. After four hours, there are 23,000 cells. Write an exponential function that could be used to model the number of bacteria after X hours. Okay, this one's trickier because we don't have points yet. We need to write them ourselves. We are told, though, what our x variable is going to be. So in our ordered pairs, x is going to stand for hours. Now we got to think, what do we think that y stands for? Well, the only other variable we have is the number of bacteria, or the number of bacteria cells. Okay, it says Kristen starts an experiment. If she starts an experiment, zero hours have passed. And then there are 7,500 bacteria. After four hours, so this is another ordered pair, there are 23,000 bacteria. And now we're in the same position that we were before uh, with the previous two problems. So again, always start with the ordered pair that has a zero in it. So we have our y equals a times b to the x. We're going to start with the ordered pair that has a zero. So 7,500 goes in for y. We talked about anything to the 0 power is 1, 
So my A is 7,500. This gives me now Y equals 7,500 times B to the X. Now I'm going to use that second ordered pair to find B. So I get 23,000 equals 7,500 times B to the fourth. I'm going to divide by 7,500. Okay, I want that value on the left side to be exact. So please don't write down a decimal that's an approximation. I want it to be exact. If you do that 23,000 divided by 7,500 in the calculator and you turn it into a fraction, you get 46 over 15. So 46 over 15 is equal to b to the fourth. Now, how do I get rid of that fourth power? To get rid of a fourth power, I take a fourth root. I briefly talked you through how to find this on the calculator, but I want to make sure I actually show you so you know where to go. Okay, so let's go and find that root. You're going to hit math and go down to the fifth one, which is that root. Now, here's the thing. We need to put that root in first. So we need to tell the calculator what kind of root it is before we can actually choose the root. So because we're taking a fourth root, we're going to do four, then go back and choose the root again. And then we have our 46 over 15. So there we go. That's our value of B. Now, unlike the previous two problems, this one isn't really as nice because that B isn't a nice terminating decimal. It goes on forever. So I actually want to keep that value stored in the calculator so that I can use it again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Stow, as you can see, and then the X button and hit Enter. So now that value of B is stored under X. So next time I go to use it, I'm going to have the exact value rather than a decimal. Okay, so we found that B is about 1.32. Please remember we need to actually write the model. So we get y equals 7,500 times 1.32 to the x. Before we go to part b, let's make sure that that makes sense. From the first video we did, we looked at exponential growth and decay. What is this? Is this exponential growth or decay? Well, we talked about it's always based off of the b value. b is greater than 1, which means that this is growth. Is that what we want? Do we want to be modeling growth? Well, we started with 7,500 bacteria, and then we got up to 23,000. So that growth does, in fact, make sense. Make sure when you're finding your B value that it makes sense in the context of the problem. Okay. So you're trying this next problem. How many bacteria cells can be expected in the sample after 12 hours? That 12 hours is going to go in for X in your equation. So you're going to plug in 12 for X in the equation, figure out what y is. Please make sure you use the stored value of b in the calculator. Okay, this is the end of the required part of the video. You do need to have this U-Try problem done. If this problem is not finished when you turn in your notes, you will not get credit for the notes. If you are confident in this material and you know what you're doing, then you are free to stop the video. If you want to do two more examples, stay on and I'd be happy to do those with you. Okay, let's look at these extra examples. First one, we're solving an exponential equation. We need to get both sides in terms of the same base. So four, we know, is two squared. What about on that left side? Well, one half is two to the negative first. At this point, we need to get these powers together. So we're gonna multiply. We get 2 to the negative x equals 2 to the 6x. Since my bases are the same, since my bases are the same, I can set the exponents equal. So I get negative x is equal to 6x. Don't get confused. I think sometimes this confuses us. I can add x to both sides. So I get 0 equals 7x. Dividing by 0, my x is equal to 0. Now initially we might think, ah, can that be right? Well, let's check. Go back to the very original equation and plug in that x equals 0. So I get 1 half to the 0, and I want to know, is that equal to 4 to the 3 times 0? Well, 1 half to the 0 is 1, and then I get 4 to the 0, which is also 1. 
So if you ever want to know if your answer is right, plug it in. Plug it in and make sure the two sides of your equation end up being true or end up being the same. Okay, let's do a word problem. A manufacturer distributed 3.2 million aluminum cans in 2005. In 2010, the manufacturer distributed 420,000 cans made from the recycled cans it had previously distributed. Assuming that the recycling rate continues, write an equation to model the distribution each year of cans that are made from recycled aluminum. Okay, we have two things that are going on here. We have year and we have number of cans. Time is going to be your x. x is always the independent variable, which in this case is going to be time. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do number of years since 2005, so since we first started, and then the number of cans. So in 2005, zero years have passed. And then there's 3.2 million. 2010, five years later, there's 420,000 cans. So now we're ready to write our model. So we get y equals a times b to the x. We've talked about you're always going to start with the point that has a zero in it. And that helps explain why I'm using years since 2005. So I get that 3.2 million is equal to a times b to the zero. So our a is that 3.2 million. Now we're going to plug in that second point. So I get 420,000 is equal to 3.2 million times b to the fifth. I'm going to divide both sides by that 3.2 million. And when I do, again, I want the exact. I get 21 over 160. Ooh, I have a mistake up above. This should be b to the fifth. OK, so to get rid of that fifth power now, like we did before, we're going to have to take a fifth root. I'm going to show us again on the calculator how to do this. So like before, we're going to need to hit the fifth root, then go choose the root. And then we put in our 21 over 160. And we get our B value to be about 0.667. Store it as X so we can use it later. So we're going to use it in the second part of the question, so make sure you store it as X. Okay, so then we get our B to be about 0.67. So our equation is Y equals 3.2 million times 0.67 to the X. Now, does that make sense? 0.67 as a value of B is, is indicative of exponential decay. Is this decaying? Well, yes. We start out with 3.2 million cans then 420,000 cans from the recycled cans. So yes, this is going down. OK, so then how many cans from the recycled aluminum can be expected in 2050? 2050, again, we're talking since 2005, means that 45 years have passed. So we're going to do our 3.2 million times 0.67 the 45th, except not 0.67. Not 0.67. We want to use the stored value in the calculator. So I'm going to show how to do that as well. OK, so we're going to type it in that 3.2 million. Now instead of typing 0.67, we're going to type x, because that's where we stored the 0.67, to the 45th. And there we go. Our answer is about 0.04 cans about 0.04 cans. Now, that should make sense. 45 years later, we're not going to have a whole lot of those initial cans being recycled anymore. So hopefully this helped solidify what we learned today. If you have any questions, please make sure you write them down, and you can send me an email or come to office hours or ask in class.